Hello and welcome to this video where we will look at solving an Excel query I received a few weeks ago. And what we have is we have a table of data which has an employee ID, a position code and an effective date. And what somebody wanted as a result is they wanted the most recent position code for every employee in the list. And for that position code, they wanted the first effective date. So in the table, which is named employees, I have formatted the dates that we will expect in our results. They are the answers in this reduced sample data. The file I am using will be available in the description of this video, so feel free to download, follow along, or even solve this query in your own way. In this video, I'm going to solve it using Excel formulas. You can take whatever approach you want, but I wanted to solve it using Excel formulas and not Power Query or VBA or other approaches. I'm also going to show two solutions, one in modern Excel with the power of dynamic array formulas and some of the other recent functions, but then I'm going to show how we can solve it in an older pre-2019 version of Excel. So here we go with the 365 solution to begin with. And from F3, I'm going to start by extracting every employee ID in that list. Now there are numerous ways we can do that, and I want to try and automate this solution as much as possible. It may be in reality that it doesn't need to be that automated, but let's see if we can. So being that I'm using 365, I'm going to take advantage here of the new dynamic array function named unique. If I run this unique function, just selecting the table column for the employee IDs, that is going to simply extract those, but also be dynamic in the future if this table was to increase or decrease in size. With that done, the next job is to return the most recent position code. So we can see for employee ID number one that they have three positions that they've held, but the most recent one is position 419. So that should be our result. This table is actually sorted in the correct order. So the most recent position codes are at the top, but we need our formulas to work even if it wasn't the case and it wasn't in order. So what I want to do here is take advantage of the brilliant max ifs function to get the position code for the maximum effective date. Now the max ifs function was released in Excel 2019. So those using versions prior to that will not have this functionality and I'm going to show the second solution of how to do it without Maxifs. But using modern Excel solution here, let's go in for it. We're going to use Maxifs to find that maximum effective date for that employee ID mentioned in column F. So Maxifs and the maximum range is going to be the effective dates. Let me just select those in this small sample data comma and the criteria will be the employee ID so criteria range is the employee IDs and then the criteria is this range of employee IDs in our results table we have the hash there for the spill reference because I used unique and I have a spill range now if I was to close bracket and press enter on that I will get the most recent effective date for each employee. It's not formatted correctly at the moment, so if I was to select those 
and just quickly format them as a date, we can see that I do have those most recent dates. Now that's not what we're after, but we're slowly building to that. Now we have the most recent effective date. Let me undo that formatting, come back into that first formula, and we're going to use index match to return the position code, which is what we want in this column. So index, what's the array we're returning from? That's going to be the position code, comma, and then we'll match the result of max ifs, the most recent effective date. So let me click on the end here, comma. The lookup array will be the list of effective dates. The match type will be exact. And if I close bracket for match, close bracket for index and press enter, and it looks like the results are still coming back as a date. I thought I undid that, but let me just go and change that back to a general format. And here we have the result that we want for the position code. You can see the cells to the left of the highlighted one for our results matches what we have in column G there, 419419116. Now we have those position codes, we want the first effective date for them. So now I'm going to bring in the min ifs function because we want the minimum effective date based on multiple criteria. We have to be careful here because you can see a position code can be held by more than one employee. And we can see that with code 419. So we need to make sure we grab the correct effective date. It's min ifs, the minimum range is the effective date column, comma, and then we hit it with the criterias. First up, let's do employee ID range, comma, and I'll reference the employees. We have the spill range there, comma, next criteria, position code column, comma, position code spill range. So if it's both those conditions, that employee, that position, bring back the minimum date, close bracket and enter, and we have our results, which match the formatted cells in the table. So that is my 365 solution, taking advantage of the max ifs and min ifs functions that came out in Excel 2019. I did also use unique, which is a 365 function. But I'm now going to look at another solution using features that have been around a lot longer. So will work equally well in 2016, 13, 10 or so on. Okay, let's do this. Let me begin by copying these headers. I'll just drag them here for the purpose of this example. And we need to extract the unique employee IDs. Now we can't use unique here because we're using an older version. Now I've got a few options at our disposal. One of them would be to use remove duplicates to copy a column and do remove duplicates. Now that's not going to be automated in any way. However, it is quite quick and easy to do. So in a real situation, it would depend how often do you really need to do this. That's not a bad answer. But to try and get a little bit closer to automation, I want to take advantage of using a pivot table. Pivot tables are primarily used to create reports, but they're also brilliant at getting unique lists in older versions of Excel which don't have the dynamic array functions. So in the cell I'm in at the moment where I want the results to go, cell F9, if I click insert, pivot table, and I want the result in F9, the table range, I'm just going to select this entire table, which is called employees. If I click OK, here we go. And I'm just going to drag employee ID into the rows area. And this is your classic pivot table look and feel, not really what I want. So up on the ribbons above, I'm going to remove the filled headers, I don't want those. And then on the design tab, I'm going to remove the grand totals, I don't want any of those. So we end up with this list of one, two, three. 
Now the pivot table, quite frustratingly, there's quite a lot of frustrations with pivot tables, as good as they are, but it's automatically adjusted the column width. Now I can come up and resize that back to how I want it to be, but every time we refresh a pivot table, it's going to adjust the column width again. So what I'm going to do is come up to the pivot table analyze tab, come over to options, and I'm going to uncheck the box for the auto fit column widths on update. If I now click OK, it's not going to adjust those column widths when we refresh this at the end of the video to show it working with future data, both solutions working with future data. Okay, we've got the unique list using a pivot table, not fully automated, but it is just a hit of refresh, just like Power Query. So not something we should really complain about. Okay, the position code, we used a max ifs function in the previous example, and I'm going to do a similar thing here, but we don't have max ifs. So I'm going to use an array formula, a classic array formula. Now I am using a 365 version of Excel right now, so I wanna be careful not to take advantage of that and try and use this formula as it would be in Excel 2016 or so. To start with, let me just come back up to the previous one, just for the sake of saving time. And I'm going to copy the formula we've got and paste it in here because I still want the index match. The difference is going to be that we don't have a max ifs function. So I'm going to change this to have a normal max function and then I'll open up the bracket and then a normal if function and then open up the bracket. Let me just remove what's inside that if function for the moment. It may be easier to understand if we write it in from fresh. And the logical test is if the employee ID is equal to F9. Now I typed in F9 because I don't want to select the pivot table and it run that get pivot data function. It can be disabled, but I realize I haven't done that yet. So I'm going to avoid it by typing in a cell reference. Comma, the value if true is going to be to return the effective date. So let me select the effective date column and put in one more close bracket. So one of them is for the if function, the other one is for the max function. And then we still have the match and the index from the previous solution around that. Now we're running this in that older version of Excel. So although I could press enter right now, I don't want to do that. I want to use control shift enter to run that array function. And you'll see the curly braces around the formula up the top. I can then copy that formula down to the other two cells. And you can see I have the same results as the previous table. This time using the functions max and if in an array function because we don't get max ifs until 2019. Now we are going to do a very similar thing to the effective date. It's going to be a min function, just like the min ifs from previously. And then we're going to provide an if function so that we can do the logical tests. Now we have two logical tests. So we're going to use two if functions. The first one will be if the employee ID is equal to the one in F, whoops, F9, comma. If that's the case, if again, let's hit it with the second condition, which is if the position code is equal to the one in cell G9. I can just click that cell because it's not in a pivot table. So I don't have to worry about the get pivot data. Comma, the value if true will be to return the effective date. Close bracket for if, the other if, and then the min. And it's an array formula, so control, shift, enter. And then copy that down and then format the cells like you would any date. And we have the same results as the previous table. 
So they are the Modern XL and the Pre-29 XL solutions for that query. If the table on the left was to update, let's see that in action. If I come over to the employee ID and I put a new employee, such as number four, as I move off that cell, you can see the dynamic array function in solution number one react immediately. And I haven't used any kind of if error function, so I've got a complaint from index matching position code there. But if I continue with a position code, let me put 300 in, and then I'll make up some kind of date for the sake of this example. And we have some results coming out, although it does need some formatting. We can see solution two has not reacted, but if I come up to the data tab and hit refresh all, we can see the pivot table reacts and brings in position number four, and then I can simply select those two cells, fill them down, and then we get the reaction of the results. So it's not completely automated like solution one and the new functionality, although it's pretty much there and just takes the fact of copying some formulas down. And we could take this a few steps further, but for the purposes of a solution, using Excel formulas and a tiny bit of pivot table, that is what we have. I hope you found this video useful. Please have a go at my solution or try your own solutions to this query. I'll be interested to see what you have, putting them in the comments of this video. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe by hitting the button in the corner so that you receive the latest Excel tutorials from this channel. I will see you again soon.